Hey everybody, Tim here. Uh, Jew Post Falls Honey Company, June 10th. And I can't believe that I'm even out here uh, because the weather is finally cooperating a little bit. You guys, this June, April was nicer than June has been. Uh, the past couple of weeks have just been so bad here in North Idaho. I mean, just wet and 60 and rain and it's been piss and rain for the past two days and finally it's supposed to be 71 today and 80 the next two days but then it just drops right back down to 60s again until like the middle of the month or more but just pulled up here so just to give you guys an idea i freaked out when i got here because there's so many bees in the air because they haven't been out of their hives in days and days and days. Look at this. This is just at the south yard. I can imagine what the north yard looks like. Look how happy everybody is that they're actually able to get out and work. The cool thing about this is that on the surrounding areas here at the south yard, there is the uh, black locust is in full bloom right now i can see black locust trees all over the place along with all the wild roses but i can see the tops of these so like they're right there next to the pole i can just see white huge white trees and that's it's all black locust there's another one right let's see it'd be right about there looking in the camera in the sun but uh, the uh, black locust put out a hellacious amount of honey. Um, there they are across the street too. Uh, you see that black locust tree right there? Just full bloom. And I've been so bummed because my bees haven't even been able to work it. And they're already, the trees are already getting petal drop. And so anyway, so here we go. What I'm going to do right now real quick is I'm just going to, yeah, I'll leave it in. I was going to pull that plug, but I'll leave it. Um, can you believe this? Oh, these girls are so happy. Anyway, uh, I just came out here real quick because all I'm going to do is I need to switch this nuke right here. This nuke is sold. Um, and I just need to put it into a cardboard nuke. And so, um, I'm going to do that. Fix this one a little bit here and uh, then head to the north yard. But I just wanted to show you this. I'm not doing hive inspections out here today. I know that all of these bees are good. They've all got a ton of room. Um, just watching them drag in gobs and gobs of pollen and nectar right now. So it's really cool. So uh, let me get my work done here, transfer that nuke over, and then we'll head to the north yard. And that's going to be a treat. So all I did was transfer over this little nuke right here and these guys are just kind of acclimating and everyone's just pouring into it um, anyway uh, this I made a split 529 and so there might be cells in there I'm gonna wait until next week to check them today's the 10th I should probably look for a new queen around the 15th uh, that split I made on the split right here I made on the 24th and so uh, there's probably a new queen in there I would imagine but I'm not worried about my little hives I'm worried about my big hives because as cooped up as they've been I don't want them to swarm um, but you would not believe the electricity in this yard just listen to this Oh, they're just so happy. Oh man, my bees are so happy that they can get out and fly right now. Good night. Awesome. All right, uh, let's head to the other yard. So it's so awesome having the bees down at this south yard because they're near the river. And because of that, it's just loaded with the uh, black locust. And they are just hauling in unbelievable amount of nectar right now. I mean, it's 
crazy uh, to where uh, a couple of things that I'll just talk with you about, a little rant. So I'm not going to rant very much about the weather because everybody um, around here knows what I've been talking about. And I'm sure that you guys, um, where you're at, dealing with your own type of weather too, whether it's too hot, too cold, too wet, too dry, uh, it doesn't matter anyway. Um, I thought I'd chat real quick. I am going to stop at the house here and pick up some more gear, uh, but I, I knocked off work early today because I've got a lot of work to do and I'd like to uh, pick up my, well, not pick up my kids because my kids are at home, but uh, grab my kids, get done early, grab my kids and maybe bring them for some ice cream later. Um, and it just seems like I don't, don't have any time ever, but I just wanted to touch on the amount of things and so there's a couple of things um, number one the nectar flow the amount of nectar that is uh, coming here to um, the northwest north Idaho um, and uh, just kind of the inland empire here number two is the amount of rain that we've had and the bees not being able to get out okay so those are the two things I mean and so this is case in point uh, I was talking to someone the other day they called me and uh, they text me and said Tim I think my bees swarmed and I said why do you think that well I watched them take off and they they must have taken off landed on a close tree in the yard uh, in there that person's yard and then uh, that person watched them fly off um, and I said, well, why would they have swarmed? When did you, when were you in your hive last? And they said, well, April 9th, like, dude, it's June right now. Uh, this person didn't understand like, oh, I, you know, they overwintered, came out of a small cluster. Um, we're doing good. Um, had, was in double deeps had full frames, um, top and bottom, a half of them on the top drawn out and all of them on the bottom drawn out. Well, the other half, the other five or six that were up top were empties. So this person said to me, I don't understand. They had all this room. Why did they swarm? And my response to them is, well, they didn't have all that room because a queen can't lay in empty frames. If they're stuck inside the queen doesn't stop laying she doesn't stop laying just because it's raining out especially when it's you know 50s at night and so that's number one is just because it's crappy weather out doesn't mean your bees quit doing their jobs like their queen's in there she's got a job to do she's got a job to lay and when they get crowded the first couple of nice days you're gonna see them go it's very very possible so um that's also with the amount of nectar coming in and the amount of days that they've been cooped up it's just swarm medicine like I mean you're fueling the swarm fire with minimizing the amount of room that they have in their hives especially if you think that you're putting in undrawn frames is going to help because undrawn frames obviously number one have to be drawn out Number two, in order to draw out frames, they need to produce wax. They can't produce wax without adequate nectar flow, sugar. Uh, sugar creates wax, wax draws out frames, gives your queen a place to lay and your bees a place to put nectar. So number that's number one, kind of my little rant right there is, um, especially for you new beekeepers, is you know, if you installed a nuke, if you installed something, but you don't have drawn frames and your bees been locked inside, um, and it was a jam packed nuke that you got could very well, uh, bees will swarm out of a nuke. Okay. That's number one. So number two, um, on, uh, nukes are bees will swarm out of a nuke. And so, uh, if you get a nuke or you are making splits, in the anticipation of putting into a bigger hive and you make a big split that's full of brood and all the brood hatches and they go out and forage while the queen's waiting to hatch and you're filling up your nuke with nectar or more bees, you know, baby bees hatching, 
your hives will swarm. As soon as that queen hatches and starts laying, they already know that there's too many bees in there and they'll swarm. So, case in point with that, I caught a swarm the other day and I am catch swarms all the time, but uh, you, I can have a queen laying usually in three days. Um, once the swarm moves in, I give her drawn comb, or once I rehive it, I give her drawn comb, food, and everything that she needs to bump up her production as quick as she can. Um, I caught a swarm the other day that was probably uh, covered like two frames, two frames in a nuke. That queen didn't stop start laying for a week. It was exactly seven days with everything that I gave them. It's in my backyard. In fact, the swarm that I caught, you saw, you watched me catch it on the video. So, uh, on, on the last video. So, that queen is in my backyard. She just started laying. So, I, it's my bet that that queen, that that small little swarm came out of someone's nuke, someone had a nuke that they weren't taking care of and they swarmed, is what I would bet. Anyway, um, because we don't get a lot of cast swarms or secondary swarms up here. So, um, that's number two rant. Number three rant is this. New beekeepers, any beekeepers, your job is to keep bees on their schedule not on your schedule. I'm just pulling into the house here. It's not about what's convenient for you and, oh, well, I'm just gonna get into the hives uh, when I have the time because that's just not the way it works. Um, you should be keeping track of the weather, your weather patterns, what forage is out and what's coming and always be thinking ahead onto the next step of what you need to do as a beekeeper in order to make sure that your hive is healthy. And so it's not, it's not based on your time and whether you are going to have the time to do it or I'll get into them when it's convenient for you because um, you're asking number one for problems with your hives and for number two, um, your hive either swarming or dying or both. And so uh, that's just a little FYI. Fine with me, if your hives swarm, I'll catch them. Somebody will. There's other, there's plenty of beekeepers around who are happy to catch your swarms. So that's my rant, uh, is just the convenience is not for you. You, they're livestock, you're working them and you need to get into your brains um, that it's based on what is best for the bee. And so if you're going to be bee-minded, you need to uh, be very much forward thinking on what uh, your hive requires. So that's it, I'm home now. We're heading to the yard. I'm gonna load up some gear and get out of here. That's my rant. And next we are gonna jump into bees. Wow, tell me my girls aren't happy to be out up at the north yard. There is just bees everywhere. Ah, oh, that's so nice. So this uh, is one of the main ones that we're gonna have to look at, are uh, the Cordovans. I have a sneaky suspicion that's going to be the first one that we're in uh, because I have a feeling they, they have cells and we're going to look at these guys too. Um, and then uh, check through a couple of nukes here. Oh, some weird little critter. These two have laying queens. That one has, I believe I found a queen in that one. And I didn't find the queen in this one, but I'm sure she's in there. There are hatched cells in there. So, um, found a queen in this nuke. So, I think mated, we're going to see. That'd be great. We're going to get into this Saskatraz colony. Maybe not all today. I have a feeling that these guys swarmed. Um, I just have a sneaky suspicion that they swarmed. These guys 
um, are filling their are filling their frames like crazy because I split the queen off of this hive right here. Um, so uh, let's get going, break into the nukes real quick, and then we will start with the Cordovans. So I always bring extra stuff with me. Um, I've got obviously my two work bins that I always have with me um, because I have everything that I need there. But you know when there's when you haven't been in your yards in a while, you don't know what you're to expect. You don't know what's going to happen, and so I bring that's all drawn frames, nukes. Some have frames in them, some don't, uh, and supers to add because chances are. I'm going to be pulling frames, hopefully some honey frames today. Doubtful with as crappy as the weather's been, but um, you just never know. And so I always gear up. This is a split off of the old world Italians. And they are in double five over fives. They're in double nukes, five over fives. This is the nuke. This is the five over. Um, and they are like that hold on my head itches there they are like that because there were so many bees that hatched out that they were all jammed in here and i couldn't find the queen in it so i wanted to space them out and so i took a brood frame from here and i moved it up into here with all drawn frames uh just so i could have better luck finding the queen in here so uh, I'm just going to jump in here real quick, see if she's laying, see if she's mated. So there she is. Um, yep, there she is. You see her? Right there? She might be mated. I don't think she's laying yet. She's getting big though. So that's good. All right. Cool. We know we've got a laying queen in here. Or a queen in here. So this is the other little split that came off of the Italians. I say little. They don't appear to be little. And so that's what I was having trouble with that's why I was having trouble finding a queen because there should be a queen in here I just can't find her because there's so many stinking bees so I'm gonna rifle through this thing and see what I can find I don't know what the deal is with this helicopter he's been cruising around uh, real slow and low since I got here I don't know what the deal is well they sure don't act queenless but I sure as heck can't find a queen in here anywhere and I'm pretty decent at spotting these queens, even these little virgin queens. Um, but they don't, they don't act queenless. So I don't know. Pretty decent cluster right down here. What's going on there? I don't know. I don't see a queen in here. So I'll give it I'll give it another little while and see what I can come up with. Maybe she's out on mating flight. So close them up onto the big hives. The carnies and the Cordovans. So this hive is the hive that I call the Pacific Northwest Carnies. And I've had them for a couple of seasons now out of, and I got them out of Oregon, but they're super, they're really tiny. I mean, the size of the bee and so a totally different color of bee also. They're almost like a, like a light root beard colored. Uh, they're really cool bees. They're really docile um, and they've really taken off. Um, I was a little bit worried about it. You can kind of see that. Can see that golden brown, but they're just so small. These bees are just the tiniest little bees. But um, 
hell of a brood pattern. So that's all it's just solid brood right there. And I'm only in the top box. Same with over here. Like that's a great looking brood pattern. So I'm going to keep going through them and see. Uh, hopefully um, there's no surprises in here you know, I'll have to make a split um, because I've got extra supers with me actually I'd like to give them one um, because they're just going gangbusters which is great so let me dive in a little deeper I can never find this queen I just happened to which is kind of cool she's right there um, and she is see how small she is she's small um, just kind of that nice light root beer color she's not doesn't have the gold like the yellow like an Italian, but she's not dark either like a carny. Uh, and she's just a, they're a cool little bee and that's all I know about them. Um, my Norsini has one and he calls it his Clyde Hive. She's running around a little bit because I just thumped this frame a little bit. So I got him a little riled up, but uh, I might see her lay here. Man, she's doing great. I was concerned about this hive, but I don't have an issue with them whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is uh, just run through the bottom super real quick. Uh, the bottom deep, I mean. And I'm going to add a super to them. They need one. I've got a 10-frame super with me that they can have. So That's it. I'm happy with them. Nice work. Yeah, man, I'm super pumped with them. They look great. I was a little concerned. They were like one of my weakest colonies, and they look great. So um, I am going to do one thing is they have honey up here. This is like a super shallow. Like it's a, they're just short little four-inch frames. I'm going to use it as my queen excluder because typically, I say typically, the queen won't go past the honey barrier. She has tons of room down here to lay in these two deeps. And so I'm going to put another super on top of here, anticipating that the nectar flow is going to be hellacious. And I'm going to use this little green super shallow as a queen excluder. So I actually gave them a full, totally drawn western. So I put this western on here and it's full drawn frames, which is awesome. Uh, so, we'll see what happens. And now, the work begins. Bum, bum, bum. On to the Cordovans. Let's see how everyone's doing in here. So not super worried, man, look at the bees, Jesus. Not super worried about obviously these two because of the queen excluder. I need to get down there and make sure that we don't have swarm cells. Here we go. There are so many bees in here. You wanna see something crazy? Is that unbelievable? There are so many bees in here. I bet you I could harvest this box. Good night. All right. Let's go. Look at the brood pattern. It's just frame after frame after frame of this. It's unreal. She is such a good queen. Some Cordovan genetics and Italians, man, they build huge colonies. Huge colonies. Halfway through the first deep. And there's our girl. She's little. Boy, she's pretty though. And she lays like a champ. Don't ever let anyone tell you guys that you need great big queens to lay my I've got little queens I've got big queens I've got little queens I've got some of these queens like the past two hives here they are just tiny and they will outperform any of my big queens just layers they are just layers 
she's looking right now, all she does is just drop eggs all day. All day long. So that's it. She is just so spot on. She's such an amazing queen. And what I did, as you can see, extra super. So that's a big hive. Left the queen excluder on. Um, but uh, that upper one is half full. They're working on the western, the natural wood one in the middle. And I had this one with me that was drawn. I only have one other, uh, two other 10 frame hives here, but the, obviously they don't need one. Um, and so uh, they're good, like they're done. Um, I mean, I need to give them a shot of oxalica every now and again, um, or put on some formic. I saw no, I just pulled a before. Um, there was, I saw no, I didn't do any testing now, mind you, uh, but not a lot of mite activity. No deformed wing, didn't see any mites. Doesn't mean that they're not there because every hive has mites, but I think that my counts would be very, very, I'm confident that my counts would be very low in um, this colony. So I'm gonna strap them and I think we're gonna get into that little St. Mary's hive right there. Again, back in this little St. Mary's hive. Uh, and the brood pattern is just incredible. You guys see that? I mean, it's every frame is like this. They're going to definitely need a... They're going to definitely need a super on that's for sure i might have to split them uh even these outside frames these are usually honey frames and i see brood here so i'm gonna jump in there and see what we got going but man they are just going gangbusters i went through this hive two times and there's the queen on the very last frame of the last time i was going through them clear over on the side wall I was thinking, man, this is really weird. Like, she is just a hell of a layer. Where would she be? She didn't swarm. And there she is. So, all's well. Putting on a super, closing them up, going home. Yeah, I made it home. Just got my gear unloaded. Get ready to load up again tomorrow and run through another couple of hives tomorrow, but I'm beat for tonight, so that's what we got. I'll be making more videos, doing more inspections. Post Falls Honey Company. Thanks for watching.